Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Wednesday of the 19th week in Ordinary Time, and today is also the memorial for St. Maximilian Kolbe, a priest and martyr of the 20th century. What an amazing story about uh, St. Maximilian Kolbe uh, being in a concentration camp, and how his courage uh, saved the life of another. And in doing so, he himself became a martyr for Jesus Christ. So I encourage you, look this wonderful saint's biography. Look it up. Find it on the web. Find it in a saint's book. And take a look at the great and a mighty imprint that St. Maximilian made on the life of the church. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus says to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. <clears throat> if he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they, are to pr which they are to pray, it will be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. <clears throat> the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, this is right on the heels of Jesus teaching about the stray. And so he's moving from the pastors going out, the shepherd going out after the stray lamb, to what do you do in the church when, uh, as a member of the flock, one of the other members of the flock sins against you? And Jesus has this pattern that is beautiful to follow. And basically, again, he says, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you will have won over your brother. If he does not listen, and then you take step two. So hopefully when you meet with the other brother from the community or the other sister, uh, when you talk about the offense and what had taken place, hopefully what you'll have is reconciliation where you will confront, they will repent, they will say, I am so sorry, please forgive me, and you will forgive them, and the matter is taken care of. But what if he digs in his heels and says, you know, no, um, I, I disagree with, with what you're saying. And that disagreement could be that he's unwilling to uh, repent and to uh, ask for forgiveness. It could be. He may disagree that it was even an offense to begin with. And so one of the things you can do is take one or two others with you um, to establish the conversation between the two of you, you and the person that offended you. And that way, as you approach them again, you'll have someone that can corroborate later what took place in that meeting and that you sought reconciliation, it was not given, or if it was given, that's wonderful. <clears throat> but if not, then you tell the church. I would recommend that in telling the church what we're talking about here is not gossiping, but it is rather... Uh, the idea of getting the pastors, the leadership of the church, involved in uh, this fault 
and allow them to work with you in helping to bring about reconciliation <clears throat> with that other person. Obviously, <clears throat> if they still refuse to listen, it says you treat them as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. One of the things that we have to remember is how Jesus treated a tax collector, how he treated a Gentile. He went up to Matthew and said, follow me. So the issue is one of still offering forgiveness and treating the person with love. It's not that you begin to treat that person as a lout and a, a you know, miscreant and someone that you're just going to be hateful toward, just the opposite. You still act in loving kindness toward that person in order to continue to bring God's love into the mix that they still might be convicted of what is taking place. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, there are a lot of times and perhaps situations where this particular teaching can really come in handy when we're having a dispute between one another. Uh, you know, if the dispute is in a prayer group or a small group or a study, uh, then you go privately. Again, you can bring another person or two. Finally, you can go to the leader and then maybe to the pastors, and they can help you to guide and direct what is taking place. Ultimately, if there is no willingness for reconciliation, uh, there's a separation, but still that treatment of love. So may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.